Howdy, campers. How is everyone doing today? Welcome to another fantastic episode of Comics 101, where we dive into the world of fantasy and all things comic related. Today's episode, you might have guessed, is about House of the Dragon, and we're calling our show Two Maesters. Joshua and myself will be talking through the most recent episode of House of the Dragon, and we'll probably end up talking about Rings of Power as well again. Josh, you want to say hello? Uh, hey everyone, I hope everything's good where you are. And for us here in the UK, the last time we recorded our episode, we found out that the Queen had passed away. So for anyone who has their well wishes for the Queen, um, we say that it's a time of mourning and we also understand the kind of situation Especially us being in London, it's kind of like a sombre attitude, a sombre like um, sombre vibe currently it's around London. But, but I think one thing that is good to say is that she was one of the things that I could kind of say is that she was a good person. She was, even though you have all things surrounding the royal family, you kind of like have this constant of like the queen and the constant of like who she is, and I think. For us growing up, it's like the Queen's been like a part of our lives, even though it's been like in the, the background of it. And it's just so it's kind of like weird that she's gone. But hopefully that, that when King Charles, when she's king now, hopefully things can then go in the same way and hopefully improve. Yeah, I hope so too. I, I wish well for the future of the royal family. And unlike in House of Dragon on Game of Thrones, we don't have violent uh, accessions after a monarch dies so that's yeah. something very good about our country at least at least in the modern era so episode four was it episode four yeah episode four yes. so before we even start incest in the morning oh my god <laughs> who called it who called it we both, we both saw that coming didn't yes. we well, what were your thoughts about the episode? Initial thoughts? Um, I think my initial thoughts of the episode was like it was like a storytelling episode, an episode to like give you a background, even like especially into like Damon as well. The fact that mm. you kind of see at the end of the episode, spoilers here, <laughs> the, the fact that what, did he just do all that stuff? So like go, befriending the princess being um taking her out to the city being able to view the sites was it just to then then marry seduce her, her seduce yeah. her marry her and then end up on the throne or does he actually care about her and i think that's like a like a key thing because i think throughout the episode i was like maybe he does care about her until like he's like oh yeah let and the fact that he didn't deny it at all like like a normal person would be like, no, I didn't, I didn't do anything like that at all. <laughs> yeah, or what Rhaenyra did when she lied to uh, yeah. Alison, that uh, that is a vicious accusation. <laughs> yeah. And the fact that he didn't deny it, and I think that was just weird, the fact that you literally, your brother is saying if you slept with his daughter, and you're basically saying, yes, I did. No, no denial, no nothing, no, um, no, no, it's wrong. And he said it in a way I even forgot the implications that if it was made public, people would be like, okay, then she can't be queen. She should be disinherited mm. because she's had sex out of wedlock, which was seen and frowned upon back in those, especially during the medieval times. Oh and, yeah. And especially the fact that with the Westerosi, one of the things that we've mentioned on the podcast is that the Targaryens saw that incest was fine, but the West of Westeros mm -hmm. was like, nah, that's a step too far for us. <laughs> yeah. And it, it was just, and I think to that point, even like the dad knew that this is like kind of a step way too far because what is like, you for those who've watched Game of Thrones, you've seen how the Sept behaves around anything to do with incest. The Sept mm. can be very strict, especially if you have a High Septon, High Sparrow, who's basically very fervent, very in tune with the people. And I think a key thing during the episode when when Princess or Princess was looking at the the play, when um, Prince Damon had taken her to the city and she's watching the play and she said that, oh, I don't really care what they think. They have no to the, to the basically the peasants and the populace. But I think 
what Damon said to her is that you might not care what they think, but Your, their opinion is very important. You would need to rule them one day. Yeah, and I think one of the things that sometimes you've seen through history and also through Game of Thrones is that that royal people, nobility and royalty sometimes forget that the reason they are in power is partly because the people want them in power. So if you see kind of like what happened during Robert's Rebellion, mm -hmm. Robert's Rebellion was successful because a vast amount of the populace wanted the current king that they had gone. Yeah, because he's bad. He's absolute yeah. fruitcake. Yeah, and I think you can't even see it now. If public perception is a certain way, no matter mm. how good you are as a ruler, the person can be easily ousted. And I think that's one of the things that, that the king actually saw with, with the whole situation with Damon and the princess is that this could then, one, prevent her from actually marrying someone, which would then weaken the actual Targaryen line. And also the fact that you have caused, could cause a potential problem with the populace who will then see this and be like, okay, so they're no better than us. Yeah, that's it. And I suppose the divine right of kings, the kings and queens of a country have to be like, above everyone else and be yeah. seen that way. So if they're, if they're doing naughty things, but in the book, this is like what becomes a really big issue between the Septon and the Targaryens at first. I think it happens before house of the dragon, the TV show. Um, but basically they're like, they're having incest. This is wrong, but you forget Aegon and the Targaryens married to both of his sisters, which is yeah. just like double incest. Jesus Christ. Incest in the morning. Right. Yeah. So, the fact that the the conqueror was originally that, and there was always this tension simmering. And then I think one of the Targaryen kings wants to marry his sister again. And then there's almost this fight between the religious and, well, the, the religious of Westeros and the Targaryens. But I think he either does turn into fight or doesn't. But again, you see that happening. Um, and, you know, Daemon taking Rhaenyra as a wife, although it is obviously so weird because it's incest. Like, oh my God. Ew. Gross. But it's actually not that uncommon. Like, come on, let's not forget Viserys was married to his sister, Ama. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. And I think even if you look at even English history, even like history in general, the, you know, Catherine of Aragon, I believe was Henry VIII's cousin. Oh, nice. And then, so I think it's in with tradition. And to your point, I think like the fact that they are still seen as being different from the Westerosi, they're not of the first men. They're not Definitely. of the Roynar. They're not of the Andals. They're something separate. And then it's if in the populace's mind, mm -hmm. are they something separate, which is weird, which you kind of see from the queen who's basically said, oh yeah, but you when later in the episode when she, when she finds out, and then accuses Princess Raina. She's like, oh, yeah, you um, you Targaryens do these weird things. Yeah, exactly, because they're, they're all very much aware of it. Yeah, and the fact that she was like, you Targaryen. And I think maybe the issue that they constantly, the Targaryens have to have is that either the people see them as being special and different, so on a pedestal, or weird and different, where they basically say that we you're weird and we don't want to be anything a, p a part of you because you kind of see mm. how the what, the rest of the people in Westeros, whether it's the first men, the men of the Roynar or the Andals, they actually kind of integrate together. So you do have houses who have a long stretch history, like you saw at the beginning of the episode with, I've forgotten where he's from, where one of the oh, suitors. Oh, that was a Baratheon. Oh, well, I, I don't know where that suitor was, the little boy. Yeah. Yeah, that was in Storm's End. I can't oh, something Blackwoods. Yep. He's like some some teenage pipsqueak. Reminds me a bit of myself when I was that age. Um, yeah, and then he stabs that that, <laughs> yeah. that other yeah. boy who's dissing him. Yeah, that, that was mental. Um, and I will say it's definitely, I think, that they, Targaryens are seen as special, like the divine right of mm -hmm. kings, kind of like how we saw it in our history. Yeah. Um, kings are appointed by God. They're not just men or women. They're appointed by God. They're holy beings. Whilst Rhaenyra even admits in the first episode, you know, like, we're not special. We're just without the dragons. We're just like everyone else. And, well, the dragons eventually die out and eventually the Targaryens go. So that kind of shows that they're only special because of that, you could argue. Yeah. And, like, that's, like, the difference between, like, Damon and Rhaenyra. Because Damon was like, tell them what 
So, but you remember when they were arguing mm-hmm. and he's on the floor and he says basically, oh, yeah. he basically says that tell them whatever you want them, to, they'll believe whatever you want to say, me paraphrasing, because you are the dragon. And I think that point that Damon Absolutely. keeps on banging on about is that we are Targaryens, we are the dragons, yeah. we are whatever we say goes. And you can see that in his attitude throughout the, the series up to date, like, his in the first episode when he went throughout the King's Landing massacring and executing and mutilating people Castrating. basically, basically mm. saying that we are the dragons the people of Westeros will do whatever we say because we are the dragons and that we are special I feel like there's a little bit of a contradiction there because he's like when he's taking Rhaenyra through the city and she's like screw what the people want and say yeah. and yeah. he's like well these are the people you need to rule one day I think I don't know I mean I do I love him as a character but I feel like there's a bit of a contradiction in that Ryan because he can't go around doing whatever you want as a ruler because then the people are going to hate you like think of the Russian monarchy just for World War One, and then during World War One, like I don't know just a bit of a contradiction I feel unless he's saying that um, you know how they said it's better off to be hated than loved I think it was Machiavellian <laughs> who yeah. said that. It's better to be feared yeah. and respected than loved and disrespected pretty much, isn't it? Yeah, and I think yeah. maybe that's his ideology that if we are the dragons and we put ourselves on this pedestal, yeah. then the populace will then follow us and do what we say because they see us and then believe that we're the almighty Targaryens. And I think that's the vision that he sees that they should be. Mm. And I think that's what probably ticks him off about his brother the fact that he isn't, he's indecisive, he isn't a warrior king, he constantly asks for other people's opinions. Yeah, well that's it, because he, he's seen as maybe, arguably a constitutional monarch, because he's, even Alison says, and I think the first or second verse, you have this like easy way about you, because he take asks for people's advice, which you know we'd probably see in today in the modern world, that would be good in a prime minister, but then someone might argue that you need someone who just makes the decisions, doesn't flim and flam around yeah. um, like Viserys did with the step, do- step stones and stuff. Okay, I just go back to that scene when um, when Viserys was talking to Daemon who's hung over as hell rolling around on the floor. Yeah. There's so jokes when Viserys is like, be gone, go back to the Eerie and he walks <laughs> out and then Daemon's like, okay, sure and just, just lies there like basically starfishing <laughs> face down on the floor. Uh, quite funny he just steals the show every time every time yeah Um, Yeah, he he does and like the question is did was that his plan all along when he came back from the Stepstones was that his whole plan to seduce Rhaenyra yeah was his whole plan to seduce Rhaenyra and then also undermine his brother well what do you think you said this earlier is he actually in love with her or is he just doing it because he wants the phone what do you think I think it's I think it's a bit of both, but oh, I think that's I think cute. the thing the thing is is that his ambition is like I think he loves his brother I think and he loves yeah. his niece, but his ambition is like he puts his ambition before everything else. I think so, and I think it's partly to do because like, I'm not even joking here. Like I think it's because he's got performance issues in the bedroom because <laughs> it happened yeah. with Missaria, Lady Missaria that a girl he's been seeing. Um, and then with Rhaenyra, some, like some reason, he's, he's, it seems like that was his intention when he took her to the streets of Silk and then walking through all those orgies. Ew, gross. That he wanted to seduce her, but it, in like the last moment, in that very intimate scene, ew, gross. He stopped for some reason. And I can't tell whether maybe that was a crisis of conscience or because he keeps having, he has erectile dysfunction. So, yeah. yeah, I've only recorded a sound button for erectile dysfunction, you know, if we need to talk about <laughs> it, it's a serious matter. It's not a funny matter. <laughs> but, yeah, I wonder if there's more to it. Cause I think because of that erectile dysfunction, he has this Napoleon syndrome where he he wants, if he can't have pleasure in that way and he, he just feels angry at himself, he's going to try and take the phone for himself. So I don't think he... I don't think he hates Rhaenyra or thinks nothing of her, but he wants that throne and he sees yeah. her as the way to it. And as he said, to restore um, the house of a dragon to its former glory. And by the way, just like in the modern world, whenever someone says, let's make something great again, 
that's always going to be violent and yeah. bad like yeah definitely yeah just just looking through history just looking because basically you want to change things from what they are now to back mm-hmm. what you believe before and there always will be tension and most people who say that will then like bring about it with bloodshed force. violence and yeah force. and that's what he meant about making the dragons um as powerful as they used to be and i think what he wants is that the people should be like in reverence of them. So I think he gets ticked off with his brother, the king, the fact that oh, well, like he, on he, worshipped in a way. It's like he sits down with his council and he considers them kind of like his equals by mm. asking them, oh, what do you believe? Or what do you believe? When he asks the hand or when he asks many of the people oh, yeah, should his I, council. Should I marry this 12-year-old girl? Yeah. And I think that ticks him off because he's like, no, 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 no. We are the dragons. We are, they are not our equals. We are, are we are above them. That's like, two ends of the two ends of like the coin, though, isn't it? Because yeah. then you think of in Game of well, you don't really see in Game of Thrones, but the Mad King, he was doing whatever he wanted, and look what happened to that. Like, yeah, you're either too weak or you're too violent, and people rise up against you. Yeah, and I think one of the funny parts of the episode yeah. is like when he's like returning back to to King's Landing. And then his dragon goes past the ship <laughs> and then knocks uh, everybody down. Yeah, and Rhaenyra hits her head. It's like, how on earth are you going to get your throne if you f- killed Rhaenyra right there? And then, oops, yeah. f- there you go. Covered the swear quite well there. And the fact that he did it directly on purpose and was like, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Everyone noticed me. And the, I think the cool thing that was cool about the episode was like, Everybody like in King's Land was like, "Oh my days, he's back! Let's go see what's going to happen!" Like literally, everyone yeah. running to the throne oh, room, like, you could "What is going to happen? What is going to happen?" The tension in that room. Oh my god, my testicles were like on the edge of my seat at that moment because <laughs> it very much watching the trailers for the episode as well. Very much looked like, especially with the King's Guard with their swords drawn, yeah. it very much looked like it was going to kick off. Like Damon was going to pipe up, and, like you should not be king. He's wearing a throne, uh, sorry, a throne, a crown on his head, like. O-M-G. Like, that could have gone very badly, but I guess he, he kind of used that to his advantage because it's like with Otto Hightower. He he wants absolute power, but he's not going to say it completely out loud, although he kind of does when he's hung over as hell and his brother's kicking him. But he's like, the Traki put this crown on my head and called me the king of the narrow sea. Um... And, you know, you're expecting him to then go on about how he should be king of a Westeros. And you think Viserys thinks this as well. But then he just takes off, like, and he bows down to him. And it's like, I was like, oh, wow, that's actually quite a brotherly move. And you see a bit of, like, brotherly affection as well. Like, you know, and Alison is, like, going to Damon at that, that, that party. And like, yeah, yeah. Alison's like, oh, we have these lovely tapestries in. Do you want to go see them? And Viserys goes on, yeah, brother, would you like to go see those tapestries? And then they just break out laughing and quite air. Uh, sort of brotherly way. That was, that was really touching to see that moment, actually, yeah. I bet they were great, great brothers when they were younger. Yeah, and I think that the part of the episode when he does go to the throne room, it also shows that he isn't just like a brute who doesn't know how to control his temper. He's actually someone who can actually scheme like mm. Otto Hightower and also can think and isn't just about violence like like several people in Game of Thrones you could probably pick out like the mountain he's a person that actually thinks about his actions and that mm. when he does things like like stand that stand out he I think he partly knows because of his relationship with his brother it won't be as bad for him so even if he does act out and I think that's what the the king was saying at the end, near the end of the episode. That how many times have I forgiven you? How many times have I have I covered for you? And I think that's what he constantly relies on is that his brother will always yeah, that's forgive what gets him, him out of trouble and will also cover for him. So like even in the ep- the mm. first episode when he goes on his rampage throughout King's Landing, his brother then comes in and does then talk about and protect him. And even when he goes off to the Stepstones without his permission to go take out the crab feeder with Chorus Valerian. He's the fact that he then still is offering him support. And also when he comes back victorious. Oh, well, when he offered, yeah, when, yeah. And then he beats up that mess. And when he like comes back victorious, like if it was like mad King Eris, he'd be like, throw him in the dungeon. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> he, he, yeah. he went away on, on a mission without my leave. Yeah. 
And now he wants to take credit for it, put him in the dungeon. But in fact, he's like welcoming him, welcoming back into like royal court and royal society. Yeah, welcoming him as a hero. Yeah. I wonder though if that was a bit of a political move as well, because it's like when someone's too popular in the public eye to to be locked away by those in power. Because in the books, they kind of describe it that way. Um, and that, whilst we're talking about what's in the books and what's in the TV show and where there's a difference. So, Kristen Cole and <laughs> Rhaenyra, wow. So, Rhaenyra gets rejected by her uncle, which is good because incest yeah. is bad. Yeah. And yeah. goes back to her chambers and basically, like, I can't tell if Kristen Cole's actually up for it or because he's a sworn knight to protect her. He ha- literally has to do everything he says, which includes... And I've got to admit that that was really interesting, that scene, because that's not in the books. In the books, yeah. Kristen Cole rejects Rhaenyra and oh, yeah, go on. it's not really a spoiler, but so he rejects Rhaenyra and Rhaenyra can never look past that. Like there's this animosity between them because she just can't take rejection. Well, ask me, I accept rejection all the time because you've got to live with it. <laughs> but go on. I think also like, the way they're doing it is that I think sometimes when you make a drama, you always try and have like a character who's like a hundred percent innocent, a person who um, everything bad happens to like, for example, the Starks during game of Thrones, it's like, well, what, what didn't happen to that family? Yeah. Or um, you watch the uh, Star Wars spinoff Kenobi, right? Yeah. You know, there's that scene where they're escaping from the fortress inquisitorious um, and then those two rebel ships come down and save them. And then there's this random bloody character called Wade. He's one of the pilots who helps like shoot up the base and then they're flying away. And then um, Reva like throws something whilst yeah. they're yeah. flying away and it takes out Wade's ship. And like the the other character in the other ship's like, no, Wade, no. And you're like, who the hell is Wade? Like, <laughs> yeah. He's been in this episode for two minutes. You've never heard of him in the Star Wars film, but yet they're dedicating some dialogue to Wade, like the innocent character. Like, yeah. let's show the, the tragedy of this, but that was very poorly done, I've got to admit. But yeah, yeah. in this, so like people like Hodor, um, Bran, when he gets pushed off. Yeah, like, like the idea that bad things happen to good people. And I think that's what makes this show so realistic and uh, yeah. interesting for me. And I think like, it, you can kind of see like that no one of the main characters, no one's like a hundred percent clean or innocent. Which, which is that? Is there an innocent character like a hundred percent? I would say Hodor. I would say would be a hundred percent innocent. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and not possi- by his own and then, choice. <laughs> and then possibly Rickard as well, just because it's a huge <laughs> gap between <laughs> him as a child and then him as a heading towards almost fully grown adult who then gets killed. Sure. Well, I mean, he, I, I suppose he's fully innocent, but he's definitely stupid. Like, let's just run in a straight line yeah. while someone's shooting arrows at me. I would say Bran. I would say Bran is, is, and maybe that's why they were like, let, let's make Tells Bran the best here. stories. Yeah. Tells the best stories. And also maybe because he's got powers as well. <laughs> I think you tell the best stories. I think you should be king. Like, <laughs> it's just so unfair. Yeah, um, yeah. All the stuff like that John went through fact that technically he was the rightful heir like like really yeah i know well done to the former writers of game of thrones allow me to show my gratitude (laughs) we still need to do that episode about why the last um podcast episode why the last episode of game of thrones sorry last episode last series of game of thrones was so bad maybe uh, when we find a good time, I would love to delve into that. Um, perhaps get someone from the audience on as well. That'd be interesting. Yeah. So in terms of some of the other stuff that's gone on in this episode, so we talked about Chris and Cole, talked about Daemon, talked about the series, and, oh, well, okay. So, Rhaenyra and Alison, that friendship is going down the gutter, but it looks like they kind of, kind of like remembered that they were good friends in this episode because you know when like Renee comes back she's been toying around looking for suitors um, and then her and Alison have very awkward interactions and they just sit down next to each other and then Renee is kind of mean to Alison um, something about like yeah because 
you know, women are just made for pumping out babies. And then Anderson's just like, ow. And Nirina's like, oh, sorry. That's kind yeah. of cute that you you feel like some things are starting to heal there. Yeah. But the question is, do you think things, they're back to being friends? Despite that argument, you know, where... Um, basically, at the end of the episode, I think Helen no. <laughs> because, <laughs> because the fact that, that Otto, Otto Hightower gets dismissed <laughs> and that the fact that yeah, she's she now, not gonna take now going to blame... Blame Princess Rhaenyra for her father losing position, and also him losing permission also shows that he's been shamed and like almost like publicly shamed mm-hmm. in like front of everybody. And I think that that could really wreck their their relationship. Yeah, probably. I mean, although Alison really doesn't have much love for her father, she does do everything he says, and mm-hmm. you know, family is loyalty in yeah. a show, unless you're Daemon Targaryen, of course. But. Uh, yeah, family. Oh, and Tyrion Lannister. Um, well, at, he was loyal to to Tommen and uh, Tommen's sister, and also. But he also Jamie shot his dad with a crossbow. After his dad tried to get him killed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Well, there they go. Where's the fucking family loyalty there? There's no, there's no loyalty in this show. The Starks. Apart are, from the, the, I think the Stark. Yeah, the Starks from, are loyal. Apart from that time where you kind of thought that. Arya was going to kill Sansa. Like, remember the, oh, in the last yeah. like last series, you're like, the, the way that she's acting is like she she's gonna kill her sister. I know, I know. That was crazy, but such good surprise when they just turn around and go for Baelish. That yeah. slimy I'm not gonna swear. That slimy geezer had it coming, you know. Like mm. very good at character and actor, Lord Baelish. Like, I wish he was in this. Uh, House of the Dragon but I've got to admit like all the actors they have in this amazing like Millie Wilcock I think I think I've got a name right now struggled in the last episode really good actor so is the actor for Alison oh sorry I can't remember her name maybe one of our audience members can comment um Paddy Considine Matt Smith um Rise Eifen as well who plays um, Rise Eifen Otto Hightower I think he plays Otto Hightower, and I think yeah, he is a really good. Actually, yeah, he plays that role really well. It's kind of like an I, unsung hero. Yeah, and I show. think one of the things that Game of Thrones always does, maybe they need to pay like, and also House of the Dragon, pay their like casting directors and giving them a raise. Yeah, like, all the actors who play the characters, you kind of you can't ever say that someone did a poor, basically did a poor performance of a character. Like when you watch like. With King Robert, the actor who played him, I forgot. I forgot uh, his Mark name. Addy. He he was like picturesque, perfect Robert Baratheon. Yeah, very loud, very bawdy kind of guy you'd meet at the pub who's just like a bit loud, a bit obnoxious, but kind of a good laugh. Yeah. And then getting like Charles Dance to be to be Tywin oh Lannister, God, that yeah. was a perfect pairing. <laughs> yeah, that one. Yeah, it's like he's born for that role. Like in all the other movies I've seen him in. He kind of does play the same role, like some shrewd politician who's quite sharp. Um, but then I don't know if you've seen Ali G in the house. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, he plays a shrewd politician in that, but then in the end, he's because Ali G becomes the ambassador to Jamaica. Part of the deal is that Charles Dance's character has to do like a strip tease for him <laughs> and stuff. And you should, anyone who loves um, Tywin Lannister Game of Thrones needs to watch that yeah. clip from Ali G in the house. It's. It's out there. Yeah. <laughs> Very strange. Yeah. And like even his like portrayal of uh, the Emperor of Nilfgaard in like the Witcher oh, yeah, 3 yeah, game yeah. was also really good. And I think they've all the like characters who are evil or borderline evil, I think they did really, really well. And I think they did really, really well on the show. Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I, I honestly couldn't think of a single bad actor in a show um, in, in Game of Thrones as well, they, they had the casting directors are on point. And it's not really, I mean, there are some famous faces in there, like, um, well, Sean Bean. Yeah. Which is funny because there's a statistic Sean Bean dies every, like, I think it's like 1.8 movies or something. Or actually, no, maybe, maybe does that make sense? I don't know. Every 1.8 movies, he dies because, like, Boromir, Lord of the Rings, he dies. Goldeneye, he dies. Game of Thrones, he dies. Uh, what else is he in that he dies? I think you have a point there because I know that a lot of people are putting up memes up about like if if 
Sean Bean's in a in a potential yeah it's spoiler film or TV series. It's likely he's gonna die. Which one was my spoiler button? I've forgotten. Ill growls. No. Oh my god, the White Walkers. Yeah. Not that one. O M G. I don't think I did one. it. No, that's the. <laughs> well, that's that sums up my skill in the soundboard today, folks. But yeah, it's a he's a human walking spoiler. You see Sean Bean in any movies or TV shows coming up, expect him to die. Yeah, that's quite dark sounding. Um, yeah, and like even also in the episode, you don't really see cause for Larian, but you do hear that he wants to marry his daughter off to, to the, the Sea son, Lord of Bravos, the son of the Sea Lord of Bravos, and like that is a major and crucial alliance and i think for those who don't know um bravos is one of the free cities mm-hmm. that was i think enslaved by the by high valyrian and then when it fell they got their independence and within the city is also the bank of bravos which is one of the, which is the bank in the game of thrones universe like for robert's rebellion they borrowed money from there mm-hmm. to defeat the mad king eris then you also see in the TV series that, uh, not Renly, what's it, the other Baratheon? Oh, Stannis. Stannis Baratheon goes up to the Iron Bank to get a loan to take out Joffrey. Mm-hmm, and yeah. then you also see Cersei speaking to the Iron Bank as well about getting some funds and also paying off the loan that her father had taken because the Castle Rock was no longer getting gold. The money so he mines, basically yeah. got the money from, from the... Um, the Bank of Bravos, and then basically took everything from the Tyrells and used that to then pay off the, the Bank of Bravos. There you yeah. go, economics 101. I'm sure that what you could see that going on in the world right now. But yeah. I, I do quite like that. How in fantasy, a lot of really good fantasy or science fiction, they the sounds so dry, but they bring in economics. You know, yeah. like these great empires in the fantasy world or in uh, intergalactic empires, they've still got to think about. They're still these these powerful individuals are still at the mercy of the economy, which I hate to say, I feel like that's what this world is at the moment. Like, um, so in this, you know, if the iron bank isn't paid, if the, the crown is almost always in debt to the iron bank, yeah. um, it's in game of Thrones, it's in the book, uh, fire and blood and it's in house of the dragon. Um, and when you don't pay off your debts, they fund the rebels to take you out. So like yeah. I think Robert got funded by them because the crown was a debt then, and likewise yeah. with Stannis, as you were saying. Yeah. Um, you look at Dune as well. They talk about the price of spice and how that is important. How the spice is the most valuable product in the world, in the universe. Um, in in um, Terry Pratchett's books as well, he touches on that. You know, I, I like that that they you know that's the realism of it, that these, these great powers, these absolute powers, they've got bloody dragons. They've got, they've got yeah. like things that breathe fire, but yet they're still at the mercy of a boring old banker with a checkbook. You know, yeah. that it's realism. It it's is, realism. It is, it is realism. And like, to your point, I remember, I think it was either in one of the, the large anthology written by George R. R. Martin about the whole history of the world that I read it, that, that Mad King Eris was basically saying that, I'm a king. Why should I have to pay back these people when I'm a king? <laughs> Literally, yeah. that's how mad he was. That king he, Charles, he... please take some notes. Please write off all the debts for the United <laughs> Kingdom. That would be much obliged. Yeah. And like, even I was like, because of the Rings of Power TV series, I actually read some of the stuff that Tolkien wrote about, like the economics of the world. And the fact that, oh, right. the fact that because um, Sauron had like really good metallurgy, so a lot of like, blacksmiths and had a lot of like arms that he could use. He would then give like certain tribes the arms and then those tribes would then go in and take slaves from, from Rohan. Mm -hmm. And then they would then send those slaves back to Sauron. Sauron would then use the slaves to work the fields to get crops to then feed his army. Yeah. And then, so then, then it was just an ever going cycle that, he would then provide them with arms. They would raid using their arms, then provide him with slaves to feed his army. His army would then be able to then grow bigger yeah, and, and conquer more. Awesome so it was me. basically a constant cycle. And to your point, the, the fact that you can see it throughout Game of Thrones, so that wherever the, the Iron Bank of Bravos backs ends up winning. And yeah, it, and it's, exactly. it's money, not much of a cool coincidence. Money talks, money talks, doesn't yeah. it? And like, I think another thing that they are linked to, I forgot what are they called, the... 
the assassins that Arya joined. Uh, the faceless men. The faceless men. I think sometimes the bank uses them to get back at those who don't pay. Yeah. I think so. I think in the book, Fire and Blood, there is like, there's some assassinations in it. And whenever they seem so like, uh, so untraceable, they assume it's because it's the faceless men because they're so good at assassinating. I don't know whether it's the Iron Bank, but there is, Viserys mentions it in the TV show um, when he's talking to Otto Hightower, like, how is it my brother died from a burst belly just like that one day out of the blue? You know, it could have been the faceless men and maybe Otto Hightower hired them possibly who knows There's like conspiracy theory here maybe they're all lizard men under suits <laughs> who knows well technically if they are the dragons that yeah. won't be that much of a surprise bingo there we go yeah actually touching on the point of dragons i was talking with my mate remember last episode we were talking about are these dragons or are they wyverns yeah and i called up inside because i was like well i mean they wouldn't be calling them dragons if they were dragons so let's just end of that my friend says that actually wyverns let me see what he said. Hang on. Okay. So yeah, he was actually listening to our podcast. And he's like, well, tell me what you think. He's like, had to pause it because I had a call, but wyverns have two legs and dragons have four legs. So technically Daenerys Targaryen is the mother of wyverns. <laughs> so this whole show, it should be house of wyverns, house yeah. of the wyverns, like, or house of the wyvern. I mean, it really doesn't have a ring to it, but yeah, <laughs> these ain't dragons folks. They're wyverns. How do you feel about that? I'm thinking of it, I think maybe they just want their dragons to look different from other dragons, but he does have kind of like a point. Because like, if you look at like Smaug in Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. he has like four legs and then wings. Oh, you know what? I just, I was so disappointed by The Hobbit. I haven't even thought about, <laughs> let's see, let's see what Smaug looks like. I brought my laptop here for a reason. And I think, yeah, I think sometimes they want to like put like a huge design but then you could kind of like say, then what about Chinese dragons? They're all, they're called dragons, but they don't have wings. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. I suppose they're more like worm like. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, Smaug. Smaug does have four. Wow, well, I'm looking at. I'm not looking at it from a Hobbit. Let me see if I can find a Hobbit animation. Mm. And like even the fact that what are the people from Marine? They that's that's their animal, their mythical am animal. What is it called again? The harpy? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So if there's dragons, mm. are there other stuff like basilisks or harpies that used to exist that died out? Or is it just dragons? Because you do see magic, but it's not as large in life as you see in like um, Lord of the Rings or other high fantasy. Yeah, especially then, the start of Game of Thrones as well, yeah. Yeah, so I'm thinking, are there other mythical or magical animals within the game of thrones universe i know for a fact that there are basilisks because in the book or in i can't remember what book i was reading i think it was fire and blood um you know it's not just talking about like accessions to the throne and the fighting between that and incest and dragons they actually talk about like things that relate to other parts of real life history as well. Like the first circumnavigation of the globe and in game of Thrones uh, and fire and blood, there are people who, well, based on what the known world in, in game of Thrones and house of the dragon have navigated, they end up on Savorios and they discover, uh, I think they discover basilisks, but also weird exotic flies and stuff. And half of them die out from diseases and they come across some Islanders who, uh, when they return finally back to port and Westeros to get here as welcome. And then they're waiting by the ship. And then all these, all these people of uh, darker skin tones come off and like, who, who are these people? And I've never seen that before in Westeros. Cause this is like the first time in history, some Westerosi has made it that far. So you see quite a lot of like what happened in real life uh, within this show as well. Like yeah. explorers um, and Corley's Valarian is one of those explorers. Like he's done nine great voyages and, if you if you have nothing better to do with your life and you're looking at the map of Game of Thrones, he's been to every part of it, even to a shy by the shadow, which is the furthest east point, I think, on the map, um, on Essos. And then there's Mosovi in the north, which I think is based off Moscow. Like, I think that's how you say spell Moscow in Russian. Maybe I'm wrong, actually. Um, and then there's Leng as well or Yiti, which is based off Imperial China, which I think we 
touched on. Speaking of which, I think there might be a spin-off show about yeah, yeah. that coming out based yeah. on that meme I sent you. Yeah. And I think that's one of the things that I kind of like wanted from, which they are doing now with Tolkien, but mm. one of the things I want them to do with Star Wars as well, mm-hmm. or even like with Marvel as well, which they've started to do as well. Right. You've, they've, during their comics or even with their books, have built up all these like worlds full mm. of so many different fascinating things. Like, why can't you like go further and delve in further? And like provide stories based off that, and hopefully they do bring something based off ET or something to do with Marine, or maybe even a good show. Possibly they could do is like what happened after High Valyrian fell, because it was basically yeah. an an empire that had conquered most of Essos. Mm-hmm. Like what took place after that fall? Yeah, I see what you mean because I quite like when I'm sitting on a toilet, I just sit on Wikipedia for. I, I could have been done in a toilet in five minutes, but I'm usually 20 minutes. Um, but I look at Game of Thrones wiki mm-hmm. and then looking at all these places, I really love the set, you know, settings and reading about yeah. some of these cities. Like, for example, um, a shy by the shadow. There's a city farthest, farthest east in the uh, Game of Thrones universe. It's called by the shadow because there's this massive shadow cast across the lands next to it. And no one knows why it's there. It's just this land is always in shadow. Um, they never explain it. And I think that's kind of cool that they don't explain it. I know you say that you'd like to, you know, see a bit more like what actually was the doom of Lyria, what caused it, what happened yeah. in between, what happened before that. But sometimes leaving a bit of mystery is really cool True. to an extent. But I, there's always a nagging feeling that I want to know why. But sometimes I think the mystery is cool in its own way. Mm. Like, for example, did Sauron arm the White Walkers? Oh my god, the White Walkers? I think so. I think we're going to find out that these two universes link Rings of Power, House Dragon. Why do you think they're out at the same time, people? Come on. Look at look at what's the answer staring us in the face. Yeah. And also, like, where do... One of the things I always find weird, like, with these fantasy worlds, mm. they say, oh, that they never answer, and I kind of understand why they don't. They're like, oh, so humans arrived, or the Rhinar people arrived in... Essos or in S in Essos at this mm. time period, and they're like, they're like, okay, then, so where did they? Come Why are they from? running from? Yeah, and like even like in like um, Lord of the Rings, they're like, oh, men came to Middle Earth at this point in Middle Earth's timeline, and you're like, or like even in like I was playing Elder Scrolls, and it's the same thing. It's like, okay, then the elves or the or the um, the people within the Elder Scrolls universe arrive, but. Why don't they ever like go into like where they came from, or is it just like that's how fantasy worlds start off? Is that elves, like even like with Witcher, the mm-hmm. first people within the Witcher universe? I think they were the the gnomes, the um, <laughs> halflings, and then the I think another group of people, and then the dwarves came in, and then after the dwarves, it was the elves who yeah. then basically ruled for a long period of time, and then humans came. But then you then ask your questions like, where do they all come from? Yeah, I suppose. that That's kind of cool, though, because again, it's leaving a bit of mystery. Also, maybe because the writers just couldn't be asked to fill it in. But yeah, where do they come from? Mm. I think that'd be a, another good podcast idea. I'd love yeah. to do one about The Witcher because I've played the video games, loved it, but I've never read the books. And the books do sound quite interesting. That is going on to my to, to buy list. Okay. What? do you think is going to happen in the next episode of House of the Dragon? Alison and Rhaenyra are going to have a huge fight. O-M-G. Yeah, defo. A huge fight which is going to end their friendship completely. They will be at times amicable around each other, but I don't think that they will ever be friends again because her father accusing her was like one step, but then her getting her father removed even if Alison doesn't love her father it's still like family I think one of the things that I think mm. I think I think it was um, psychologists have said like even if someone doesn't like their brother or their father or their mother if someone like bad mouths them there's something within us that still gets <laughs> the person angry yeah and exactly like, like Damon um, when Corley's Valerium's chatting yeah. crap about about um, his brother and he's like only I get to say that about my brother yeah because like, okay. I think maybe we think like because they're family you attack them is also an attack on us 
Yeah. So I think she will take it that you, even though I don't like my father that much, you got him ousted, publicly disgraced, and replaced. And, also, and, and basically you did, well, technically she didn't do, but co- co- yeah, everyone but will lied. believe that. She lied, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> and that everyone will believe that she, that she did. And the fact that, the fact that it's something that happened. So Alison will believe that she's lying about something that's happened. And because of that, her father, even the, fa- the fact that she doesn't really like her father was, was removed and taken out. And, and another key thing is like, who are they going to name the hand of the king? Cause the, cause unless, well, it's not going to be cause of Alaren because of the issue of him not marrying his daughter, the king not marrying his daughter. Yeah. But I think they're proposing, um, Rhaenyra to marry, yeah, Le- Leno, Leno, Lamer, more like. But <laughs> we'll we'll see because I, again, I can't say much. I hate reading the book and talking about this because oh. like, whenever I ask you this question, like, what do you think is going to happen next episode? I'm like, I think I know, ninety percent sure. But I feel like there's going to be courting between him and Rhaenyra, and to be fair, they they could be kind of hot together, you know? Yeah, maybe. Um, and we'll probably see the new actors come in as well, yeah, I yeah. think. Um, I don't know if it's next episode or the one after, but I feel like, I mean, I, I, w- I want to stop doing it, but I watched the trailer for episode five. So I already know a few things, but I'll be quiet. But I mean, the trailer's out there. Is it really a spoiler of the trailer's out there? Technically, no, because it's an open and uh, it's open. It's public domain. There we go. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, well... Yeah, definitely going to be some courting between Lenor and Renewa. But I think we're going to see an absolute fracture between... Because this is what's going on. You see two two or three power bases building up because you've got the high towers and what's going on them. You've got Rhaenyra. You've got Daemon. And maybe... I don't know where Claude Corley's Valarian's going to come into it because, to be honest, it seems like he's kind of doing his own thing. Yeah. Possibly. I mean, he's... You, him and Daemon seem kind of tight, but people just use people in Game of Thrones, don't they, yeah. for their own ends? Yeah, and I think I think another issue with Daemon is that he kind of rubs off on people poorly. So I think like if you stay around him too much, you kind of like get annoyed with him, get angry, upset with his nature, because it kind of seemed like Chorus Valerian was like in on partly mutinying against him when they were, because I think... He really, has, but I thought he'd like called out his brother. I was like, ah, no, no mutiny, whatever. I think, I think the issue is, is like, he's, I think he's hum, Damon's someone who's hard to work with. Yeah. And I think that's why you kind of saw like a bit of a mutiny with the people there. And I think if you think about it in the whole series, apart from Rhaenyra, who could you say is Damon's friend or is it always friendly to Damon? Oh, throughout the whole series. Well, I mean, his brother's like grudgingly friendly. Missaria, um, I mean, yeah, they're kind of got a thing going, but it seems, as she said, she's with Damon for her own liberation, you know, and you could see why. I mean, in this episode, you see very clearly. Um, so when Alison is having sex with Viserys and when Renew is having sex with Krista Cole, Renew is, you know, having pleasure, you know, whilst. Yeah. Alison, she's literally just used to be a baby maker and she's just literally looking up at the ceiling whilst Viserys is doing his thing. He even says to her, oh, come on, it's your, your wifely duties, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. you, you feel really sorry for Alison there because she's been forced into that situation by her dad and then she's basically this baby maker. Um, yeah, what else do we think is going to happen? Uh, I think something's going to come up of... Um, of- Chorus Valerian's marrying off his his daughter. I think mm. he's because he he wasn't in the episode at all. And I think his wife, the the queen, who never was. Yeah, I think she's also going to feature in the episode, especially if there's going to be courting between the two families. I mean, yeah, I saw it in the trailer, so yeah, oh. I'm on the ball about that one. Yeah, you got that right. Yeah, so um, so I think that it's going to be a heavily like political intrigue episode where people are trying to get in good graces with other characters or other houses. And then possibly Otto Hightower probably scheming about how to put his... Oh, he's going to be a sour Now, now his grandson shit, onto the throne. 
in. <laughs> <laughs> I just need yeah. to stop swearing. <laughs> I, think, I think, yeah, he will try and like, I think he's going to now start scheming like, okay, then to secure my family because I can't, he, I think he also kind of sees like, he has no like friendship from Princess Reina. He has, so if she then becomes queen when the king dies, she could then, as families do in the middle of medieval well, times. State. No, no, no. As in like kill off half the family that could be, that could oh, as a claim to the yeah, throne. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause I Cause forgot it, that there's the other kids as well. There's yeah. like Aegon, is he called Aegon? Yeah. One of Alison and Viserys kids. Yeah. yeah. And she was pregnant of another child. So I think she's also given birth to that child. So now she's got two, I think two sons. Yeah. That's a lot yeah. in the line to the phone, you know, and the fact mm. they are the King's own sons, not bastards by marriage. So then what he could also and I think that's another issue with like tradition and and like what people would do so potentially Princess Reina might not do any of that when she's queen but just because there's precedent Otto has to then think in his head that okay then the king he also knows that the king is ill as well that the king could potentially die and when he does die are they the, is the queen now going to then get revenge on my family and my daughter. No comment from me. <laughs> uh, I wish I had that spoiler button. <laughs> but or is it? Or is it not? Who knows? Who knows? White Walkers could come as well. Oh my god, the White Walkers. So possibly that. Um Oh, there was something I was gonna say there, but I've totally forgotten. Uh well, that'll just talk me to the end of my days. Well, any final things you want to add? Um, one last thing to add is that how many episodes did this season have? I had like, a look, it's 10. 10, okay. So actually, we're, next episode will be halfway, halfway through. through. So yeah. interesting how they'll switch the characters either at maybe halfway through this episode or the episode after because they do it perfectly halfway through the series, which is you know just symmetrical. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. And then that comes to the question that are they then going to be like what we read last week is that are they then going to end it and be like, okay, then this is this story. The next story for, for House of the Dragon is going to be another story about the Targaryens. Or are they going to continue this story into the next season? I think that is like... I think they'll continue it. I think cause there's a lot to work with there. Mm -hmm. But then there's room to keep going. Mm, I think so. I think they've, they've okayed it for four seasons, yeah. I think. Yeah. so. Unless they're going to do what they did with The Hobbit and just long it out, like a book that's thinner than a Jacob's Cracker. They're just going to turn that into three movies. Like, what was it the last movie two parts for The Hobbit? Or was it just one? I can't um, remember. It was one part, but then they had a director's cut, which I think was three hours long, which basically <laughs> extended the the battle scene to a lot longer. Oh, maybe I'll watch that, actually. That's probably the only redeeming thing about The Hobbit series. Okay, well, I think we'll leave it there on... This episode talking about House of the Wyverns. Oh, sorry, House of the Dragons. But I'm going to call it House of the Wyverns now. So, come to the end of the episode and I just want to say a huge thank you, Josh, again. I'm really digging this studio thing. Um, and just thank you for being there in my life. I can definitely say I've learned something new about the world of House of the Wyverns and Game of Thrones. Uh, if you, our audience, want to hear the full episode, make sure you subscribe to our Patreon page. Uh, the link is down below. If you want to hear more from us, the two maesters, make sure you subscribe to the channel or follow us on the podcast on whatever listening platform you're using. If you like the video, a like and a comment is always appreciated, especially at all the fake news we've been talking about. I'm sure we've got something wrong. And make sure you click the notification bell so you never miss an episode. Thank you so much for being an absolutely fantastic audience. And we will see you all soon. See you next week, guys. Bye bye.